start off, before we actually start the task, we're going to start off with an intro. Uh, I got to turn off OOT, that was just for uh, background music. So here we go. First we're going to start with the intro. And this is this is in the past, like the upload. So you can go see this whole thing. No, you said the intro. You meant the or the the trailer, the trailer. I'm sorry. Yeah, the trailer. Okay, yeah. So th this is this is already out. Yeah, there's hell spoilers in here. This is my favorite part. By the way, today is the first day of fall. So good timing. Yes, All right. that's right. Today is the first day of fall, so and good, here... I promise. We will finally start the real thing. Although this also has an intro. Yeah, this is the real 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 intro.今までのデルタと中で最高になると思います。え、50時間は保証します。あと何時間遊ぶかは面白さ次第ということで、え、かなりえ、ボリュームのあるゲームになってるはずです。え、映画のようで、映画でなくゲームのようでゲームでな、本
without using the door, and it actually ended up working. Um, and it is a trick that we do use. We actually use that trick in this run that initially started this whole thing. Um, so that's exciting. But yeah, that's pretty much it. And the challenge was always was always there, but like it just seemed, you know, kind of like impossible for like a long time. Because like why, like why the fuck would this ever be possible? Uh, so yeah, but you know, it is, and we made it. So, uh, how long did you work on this, and like, how long did it take for everything to fall into place for this to actually be possible? Uh, well, as far as I know, the only thing for a while, at least like, I guess the the last thing that needed to be discovered was the uh, the wrong warp to the twin Roba's room. That was the only thing um, for a while, and we basically needed a way. Well. I don't want to spoil anything, so I'll just say that it is possible. <laughs> um, and as far as routing goes, this has been in the process of being routed for a long time, but that is something I actually don't know a ton about because, um, like I said, uh, you know, the intro and everything, I didn't actually route this. That's why it's a collective effort because I just actually made the test. So, yeah. All right, and so what exactly is a door? What's the exact definition that we're skipping here? So, um, let me just read verbatim from the FAQ. The loan restriction of this movie can be best defined as no opening doors, where opening refers to multiple different in-game events. The first and most obvious is just opening a door by standing in front of it and pressing A. Um, and additionally, doors that are opened by actions other than an A-press, such as the Door of Time, uh, are also not allowed. This, uh, yeah. I think that's the only door, too, that, like, is technically a door, but, like, can't be opened by pressing A. I think that's the only exception. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah, probably. I think so. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, luckily. Do you, like, know about the game? And so the task has started, uh, just collecting rupees for something, I assume. Jerunia doesn't have a door. That's that's just a block that you move. We don't even move it anyway. Spoilers. Nice RNG myth. The rupees. Oh yeah. So we've got to buy sticks and uh, Deku Nuts first thing. Those are going to be useful later on. Turn up the video Not volume. Not a shield, though. Skipping out Not on a shield. shield. A loading and zone is not a door. So the first thing done, obviously, leaving uh, Kukiri Forest. Deku Tree is going to be done just later on. Can't quite beat it without any doors yet. So the beginning of this run is fairly standard for OOT purposes, right? Just like escape, Kakariko bottle. Yeah, it's fairly standard, I'd say, up to, um, I guess, going adult, probably. That's when it starts to get cool. Or actually, no, nah, probably up to hookshot. Like, if you if you play the game, you probably know the, the route more or less up to hookshot. Well, there's there's a few differences. Right. That's yeah, not, it's not, like, you know, 
the same as you're used to. There's some slight differences, but you'll see. Yes, the test is already done. We're watching the full thing right now. No, I'll skip because, well, I mean, I was going to say because we don't have shield, but you don't need shield to skip out here, but I think it's still slower for her, actually. Uh, th there's like two different methods we, you can we, use we for... We need the Deku stick anyway, so... Yeah, there's like two different methods you can do for Owl Stick. One requires two different items that you have to swap between constantly, and you only have one item here. There's a different method that involves like pause buffering, backflips, and side hops and stuff. That is like a tiny bit faster. Although I'm actually not sure if it'd be faster on emulator just because pauses suck. Oh yeah, I I'm I am completely ready to like get called out for like doing slow shit because I guarantee you there's like a bunch of stuff that I haven't even noticed that's wrong with this test. Yeah, so you've probably seen this part before. Uh, Kuko's it's pretty important for almost any OT speedrun. Gotta get that bottle. Because bottles are OP. Yes. Yes, low Ted. Officially low Ted. Uh, this is 1.0, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, nice fun little camera angles to make this slightly more interesting than usual. Yeah, I, I try. I, you know, I really try to put in more effort just to, like, make it entertaining, like, especially if it's, you know, like a boring segment like this, I want it to just at least look interesting or look like, you know, something you might not have seen before. Uh, someone in the chat asked, side hops faster than back walking. Yeah, side hopping is a little bit faster than back walking as child, especially when going up and down slopes. As adult, um, back walking becomes faster, right? As adult, backwalking is faster over distance, but side hopping is faster for short distances. Right, okay. So it varies. And then, of course, during Kukos here, you can't side hop while holding a Kukko, so that's why you're still backwalking a lot. Yeah, and I don't have a sword or anything to, like, hit them with and make them run. Uh, that weird forward walk animation is he's mashing Z every other frame, which is also called a Z slide, uh, which will be used later on. Um, other than that funky animation it causes, uh, you can also use it to preserve speed, which you'll see a bit of later on. Ooh, that was a really nice uh, Coco dive. So right here, gotta get to bo uh, bottom of the well early, and he uses a Deku Nut to uh, make the cuckoo angry so you can follow through the water during the cutscene and get to bomb of the well early. And so here's a 1.0 exclusive glitch where you have something in your hand and you try to enter a crawl space and throw a deck out right before. And it kind of messes with Link's hitbox and allows you to clip out of bounds. Um, he ended up... Uh, Walking on a wooden plank near the ceiling, clipped out of bounds there, got to the bomb shoes early by going to the basement, then swimming through the invisible water upwards to grab the bomb shoes there. And bomb shoes are another super important item. Bomb shoes and bottle are like two of the most important items in the game for speedrunning. For anyone asking like if they to like see something again, I mean obviously this is gonna be on YouTube, but then also after the run is over. Uh, we have a, a special treat, special treat for you guys, um, thanks to my, my man, Nerds with Game. Don't, don't spoil too much of what it is, but... No, I won't, I yeah, won't, yeah. but okay. I'll just say, yeah, it's a little thing he made, and, um, you'll get to see some parts again.
I tried to keep the map spamming to a minimum because I, I was here when uh, when you streamed the 100% uh, tasks, or I forgot which one oh, it was. Yeah. I had like a, a ton of. I, I think it was the 100% and... one. I think it was 100%. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it didn't. It didn't sound good on the ears, so I just, yeah. yeah, keep it to a minimum. Not going straight to Temple of Time. I wonder what could be done here. Oh yeah, so you gotta leave and re-enter Hyrule Castle to make uh, Malon appear here. Nerds is not in chat because uh, he... I forgot what exactly, but he has some sort of... Uh, yeah, he was actually gonna be here, but it had uh, something came up for him. Dang, he got owned. I think you're getting owned, dude. Oh. It's okay. Yeah. Even if you get owned, you have a fairy. I was just getting owned ironically. Just kidding. I actually need to get owned right there. It's important. Yep. Uh, to catch a fairy, you need to have... If you want to get a random fairy drop, you need to have low health. And so that's the purpose of getting damage there. You can catch that fairy. And you gotta waste a little bit of time because you gotta wait until morning for this egg to hatch. That's why he's just messing around with some stuff here. If anything, right now is uh, unoptimal because it's you know, I have to wait for day, anyway. Yeah, we, we get to see the sun a few times when it's not actually day out, which is cool. So you just wake that guy up and leave, huh? Yeah. Alright, that's a bit rude. Listen, man. I'm sure there's a purpose. No doors. I'm sure there's a purpose. And now we're going to Temple of Time. So here's a door right here, the door of time. That's gonna get skipped here right it here. Is. Big door, get skip big door. door. Go on that door, who's boss? No, we're not going to fast forward cutscenes, or else the timer will be inaccurate. Come on. I'm sure they're talking about important door related topics though in this cutscene.
So I saw a question earlier that asked, uh, what what is the No Doors Collective? You want to talk about everyone who's worked on this? Yeah, right. Um, I was just thinking about that, actually. Uh, so the people who actually are part of this so-called collective, uh, Emma Tessaru, I, I think I'm saying that right. Uh, ben Stevens, you all know him. Kafte Emuis, e e e u m e u s Exodus, uh, Fash, OMG a tree six, Nerds with Game, Natalia has died, Sniping one one seven, and then myself, and all those other people. And this will be in the description of the YouTube video. So, yeah, all those other people were who I was like, you know, talking to and referencing my work with while I was, you know, working on this. But none of them actually cast any part of it. I, I did the whole movie, like I said. Yeah, and they're all people who worked on routing, worked on finding glitches for this, making this whole thing possible. It takes, uh, it took a lot of um, work to just make this, make the idea of all dungeons, no doors possible in the first place. How many re-records? Uh, hold on, let me check. Who is playing right now? No one is playing. We are watching a YouTube video, but the task was made by Taylor. The inputs were made by Taylor. How many doors? Zero. Is this RTA possible? At the moment, highly unlikely. When is door limit runs? <laughs> Never. How many glitches though? A lot. Soon we'll be getting to the part where the big glitches really come in. How many doors do you actually skip? Think about every dungeon in the game, and then think about all the doors that you normally need to open in order to beat that dungeon. Those are all the doors. And then, and then in addition to that, there's doors not in dungeons that you still need to somehow find a way to get around. Uh, backwalking is used there because over long distances, backwalking is faster as adult than side hopping.
Oh yeah, that uh, that kind of weird slidey motion with that weird walking animation. That's called a Z slide. You essentially just mash Z every other frame, and it preserves your momentum. And uh, one reason you kind of want to do it with backwalk sometimes is because when going up slopes with it, you don't lose your speed. Whereas normally when going up slopes, you would lose a little bit of speed. Something else I should point out is that start uh, from a talking to, you know, the, the cuckoo lady. For that point, all the backwalks from optimal, optimal backwalks. Because at first I didn't know that you could actually blame uh, Nice back or backflip over the flame. I think you're cutting in and out. I think your mic's cutting out. The controls. Hello. Taylor, I think your mic is uh, cutting out repeatedly. Can you hear me, Taylor? Oh no. Hello. Hello. I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. What's up? Good. Say what you said. I'm back. I, I just went out and, uh, you know, bought a new mic real quick, so no more problems. All right, great. End of all the problems right now. All right, so what were you trying to say? Where did I stop? Uh, back walking at the cuckoo lady something. Oh, yeah, just basically saying that... If there's any task nerds in here, all the backwalks from here on out are optimal because you can save a frame every backwalk by doing this thing with a control stick that you can't really do in real time. Hey, no, 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 we... We didn't open that door though. So we here's the thing. We we touch a lot of doors in this run. We get we get real cozy with a lot of doors, but we don't open them. We don't use an action <clears throat> on the door, and that's what counts. I actually wasn't checking. What time was the Dampe race? Uh 44, I believe. Okay. All right, so going to Ganon's castle now, and the reason the reason for this, uh, I don't think you're actually going to Ganon's castle now, right? Just watching the cutscene. What? You're just watching the cutscene here, right? Yeah, just watching the cutscene. Yeah. Not doing anything yet. And so the reason for just watching this cutscene is watching that cutscene, or just entering Ganon's castle area in general, turns it to nighttime, and uh, you want to turn it to nighttime here to hash the egg faster. And so this is uh, called an A slide or analog slide. It's uh, you roll into a bomb yeah. and hold a what is it? You alternate between neutral and left so or right hold, every other frame. You hold shield and down until a certain frame, and then from that point you alternate between uh, down and neutral on the analog stick every frame, and you keep your speed. Yeah. So um, A slides and Z slides and Hessing are all pretty similar. They have like slightly different uses, uh, especially for a task. But you can think of A slides and Z slides as a slightly alternate version of Hessing. And when you see me like twitching when I'm doing a Hess, that's basically just switching between ESS position left and ESS position right um, every frame. And there's a there's actually a script for that. Shout out to Nerds with Games, uh, one of the people in the collective who helped make this, for providing me with a ton of useful scripts. Um, for just making some stuff a lot easier, like text and, uh, you know, like the, the, the cool looking ESS thing. This is some interesting stuff you're doing right now. Oh yeah, so that was cool. I, I figured I could probably reach the, the skull, and I'm glad I, I'm glad I could. I barely made it though, it was close. And we just need to waste time right now, because we're waiting for the egg to hatch. Oh. Preferably, we want to enter DC 
Actually, well, you'll see. Ooh, so that was really nice. Uh, probably hard to notice what happened there, but uh, what happened is the bomb chew exploded, blowing up the wall at the same time that he left, and that skips the cutscene of uh, the the wall blowing up and showing the intro cutscene to DC. And if you've watched OT speedruns recently, you probably know about this glitch. Die as you hookshot a ladder and get revived by a fairy and get to do a big jump to jump uh, all the way up DC and get bombs early. And that's the whole purpose of that fairy from earlier. Yes, that is that is uh, affectionately known as the Cory Hop. Official name. You heard it here first on ZFG One. Hey, there's a door. Nice job not opening it. I, I really tried. So uh, yeah, that that mega flip earlier clipped into the head without opening the head by uh, lighting the eyes. And when it's not open, and when you when you get inside it when it's not open, it kind of uh, has like hole that points out of bounds. So you can get out of bounds here and just hover in this out of bounds area. And you can hover straight into the boss loading zone without touching a door. And that is Dodongo's Cavern without a door. Yeah, and that this trick was actually in both of the previous uh, no doors tests because even though they're any percent, they both use uh, DC, so had to do them. You can't do a super slide there because no hover boots. Getting hover boots without opening a door is a bit tricky, as hover boots are behind a door. Good gainers. Is it possible to get hover boots? I'm pretty sure it's not, right? I actually don't know. Well, they're not gotten in this run, I would assume. I mean, I know you can get into the room, you can get into the hover boot room, but I don't know if you can actually get hover boots. No, we are not going to make door puns. We're not going to stoop to that, that level of commentary. Yeah, so no cutscene skip, no wrong warp here. I'm sure there's a good reason for that. There is a good reason. Oh, good. This is the fun part is that I don't actually have to tell you what it is. I, I can just make shit up. Cool. Okay, so coming up here is the trick, the, the trick that Kido was doing, uh, more or less. He was doing a super slide, in this case we'll be doing a hover, but it's the same trick. 
Shout out. Shout out to Castle like one and only. Yep. This is the trick that spurred discussion of no doors in the first place. There's a door over there. And that's how you enter a house without opening a door. And that's how you get out of the house without opening a door. Yeah, that's the only way, actually. So where are we off to now? Uh, we're actually going back to, to Kakariko. Uh, uh, it, it, it's kind of inconvenient that you have to save warp, but that is the only way to, to leave that room without using doors. So. Okay, uh, correction. That is not the only way out. If you use Frost Wind on V, you can exit the house. Okay. Oh, so, technically not the only way. But... You can't really set that up right now. And so right now he's just doing part of the uh, trading quest for uh, RBA, I assume. Yep, doing that. Because uh, there's a few quest items that we need um, to RBA. So we can get some important other quest items. Yeah, a pasture. There's there's uh, some pretty good bomb drops in here. And so that waiting there, Poes don't actually spawn until about 10 seconds after you enter an area, so that's why that Poe didn't spawn quite as fast as you might think. Yeah, that's the fastest you can really get him to appear. And so right here, you got a bottle on B. Uh, this is called Reverse Bottle Adventure. When you get a bottle on your B button, uh, it's done by swinging the bottle when your last button was not a bottle pressed, and so the game would normally put whatever you catch in a bottle over your last button pressed. In that case, it was the sword instead of the bottle. And when you catch something with a bottle on your B button, it modifies parts of your inventory based on your item on C right. And so right there, uh, what did you catch with C right there? Was it Kajiro? Uh, well, first it was Kajiro, and then, uh, I mean, I'm not sure if it was a catch or release, but I know we had to do bugs, because it puts, when you do it with bugs on on your C-Rite, you actually get bugs in your inventory in, like, a different slot, so that was kind of important. Yeah, so it, our RBA is a bottle in your third bottle slot, and then Kajiro also RBAs your bomb bag and quiver. And then trading in Kajiro for the Odd Mushroom, the next part in the trading quest. But I guess we're not going to go trade it yet. We're going to Sacred nope, Forest Meadow. Not, not, not just yet. Nice little jump. You can use that jump to skip this entire maze section. Oh man. Yeah, this is a this is a cutscene skip right here. Uh, this was a this was Akright. Akright had a video on how to do this, so shout out to him. Yeah, so you hover out of bounds there and hit the load the um, the cutscene trigger from out of bounds. The cutscene trigger is absolutely massive; uh, extends all the way down and to the side for a ridiculously long time. 
And so you just hit the cutscene trigger, then void out, so you get the song and don't have to watch the cutscene. And uh, when you go in the water, if you go in the water at a certain angle, so you don't, um, so Link doesn't like pop his head up in the water, you can preserve your speed over the river there. So you can do that Hess all the way across the river, which is really nice and optimal. Another door skip. There it is, man. Right there, that mega flip. The Mega Flip landed on the stairs, and the stairs have like a, a slight angle that can allow you to clip out of bounds if you Mega Flip at it a certain way. And uh, once you clip out of bounds, you still need a damage boost to actually get into the loading zone, but you clip out of bounds, you do a damage boost off the chew, you get in here without opening that door. Yeah, that, that trick was cool because I actually tasked like right up to the door. Like I actually, I tasked going around the other way from CAC and I got right up to the door and I'm like, oh wait a minute, shit, how do I skip this? <laughs> nice. Did that okay, happen so, multiple times or is that the only time? That's actually, I think one of the only times that like, er, actually no, late, okay, later on in the run, there was a few times where there were some close calls where it's like, oh, we didn't anticipate this, but actually it didn't happen as often as we thought it was going to. And by the way, that's one of the only unoptimal segments that I know of in the run. Like when you spawn on the pedestal, I did a, I did a, a mega flip and kept the speed off of that, which is backflip speed. But it would have been optimal, and I do this later, um, to just do a, a Hess. So RB is going to be coming up again, he's going to get a bottle on B again, this time I'm going to do it with Poe on C right, which is going to... Poe on C right modifies your bomb chew count, so catching those bugs gave him 29 bomb chews. And he's going to catch the bugs again with Potress on C right, and that gives you some songs. It gives you Zelda's Lullaby, Prelude of Light, Nocturne of Shadow, and Serenade, I think? That's right, right? Yes, that's right. Yeah. The real important one from that being Zelda's Lullaby. Nice. You're like a couple seconds ahead of me because I'm watching the stream. Oh, okay. Oh, did you? Oh, yeah, the, the thing with the Goron. Yeah. Yeah, there's a cool little like camera uh, like angle thing too, right when the text starts. And I, I have no idea how I got that. I just, just like pressing buttons. Oh, and by the way, I don't know. I guess this is like not common, but or so I've been told. But I, the way that I like actually task stuff sometimes is I will like just mess with it like I actually have a controller plugged in and I'm like kind of like messing with it like playing it RTA and just experimenting like that because I don't know it's really hard for me to like play the game with the uh, you know the the input um, device from BizHawk because you have to like fucking click the uh, joystick around yeah that fun. always seemed kind of unintuitive to me yeah I, I have to have my controller my atomic purple Nintendo 64 controller. You heard it here first, folks. That's the official uh, N64 color of this task, uh, atomic purple. Another clip there that uh, Hess or Ace Light clip, I'm not sure which one, uh, clip through that statue. Statue's not a door, but even if it was, skipped.
And so this is a big part of the reason he RBA'd Potrasaw earlier for Zelda's Lullaby. Because you need magic for this. And of course you don't want to go meet Zelda. That's just too slow. Yes, we have skipped many doors so far, and there will be many more doors skipped. bomb drops. So next we're going to Zora's River through the uh, that secret exit in uh, Lost Woods and then to Zora's Domain. Ooh, that was really cool, like, yeah, twisted yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice so hope. That, that The clip into Zora's Domain was apparently like new I, that's like one of the only things in this test that i think actually might be the first time it's been in a, a run. yeah i've actually never seen that clip before Ooh, that was a really quick uh king's aura skip yeah so since king's aura was never moved as a child he's still blocking the way to zora's fountain as adult and so you need a clip out of bounds luckily the clip out of bounds there is super easy but and also pretty fast And here in Zora's Fountain is a very important item. Without this item, many doors would not be able to be skipped. How many bombs are used in this run? Probably a very large number. Yeah. Someone joked earlier about uh, two hours of hovering. It's not a joke, boy. Dang. There is a section in this run that is uh, very hover intense. So, that'll be maybe the bathroom break. Yeah, so Furrow's Wind has a lot of glitches you can do with uh, manipulating rooms, I guess, is the least spoilery way to put it. So, yeah, really important item for skipping dungeons. Or, skipping doors. So here's another dungeon we're finally going to. Hey, Jay, inside hey, job. Tell me, tell me when uh, Link pauses next. Let me okay. know. Okay. Pause. I just wanted to have like a live version on my. Okay. Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. So yeah, to get into Jabu, um, Jabu's loading zone does in fact exist as adult. It's slightly above or slightly below the ice, but above the water, and so to get in there. You have to do a very precise clip um, through the ice 
during like a mega slide hop or a mega flip or something like that. And you also have to be moving upwards while you do it, or else if you're like only moving downwards, you won't hit the loading zone. Which is why it's you can't like you can't just do a regular mega mega flip down and clip in. It has to be like a mega slide hop really close, so you hit it while you're still rising. And so Fora's win set in Jabu is going to be really important for beating Jabu without a door. Yeah, you'll see that. Um... Actually, right after we take care of some business in Lon Lon Ranch. I wonder what we could possibly be doing here. Just gonna steal a Pona. Without a door. So yeah, if you just hover over the gates around uh, Lon Lon Ranch, you instantly get a Pona. Since normally, the only way you're supposed to be able to get over those gates is with a Pona. So you just get a Pona instantly. I wonder what a Pona has to do with doors, though. That look. Yeah, those drops, dude. And some more RBA coming up. Uh, that RBA was with an empty bottle, which puts a uh, bottle in his third bottle slot. We saw he had a, an extra bottle there. And now he's also gonna die. And so uh, the reason for this death so when you enter an area while swimming, or enter an area while in water and then die while you have a bottle on your B button, when you respawn you'll have a blank B button, you have nothing on your B button. Uh, if you don't enter the area in water then you'd normally have a Deku stick on your B button. And so if you ever, if you were like, you know, seven years old when this came out and you ever learned about glitches, you know, in 1999, you might have heard of the swordless thing glitch, where you can use items on Epona when you're swordless. And that's exactly what's going on here. Yeah, that glitch is uh, vital to, I don't know if you were watching um, the trailer when uh, ZFG played that, but there's one thing in there which we're about to see that we need, uh, you know, swordless on Epona for. Yeah, I definitely remember using Swordless Epona stuff when I was a kid. It was pretty fun. It was like I think it was like the first glitch I knew about. Or at least one of the first. First we gotta stop and talk to this nice old man first. Gonna give us another important item for RBAing later on. So for this glitch to set it up properly, um, I need my my exit, I believe, that the the exit value to be a certain um, very specific value. So. I need to get that value by going through one of the entrances to Gerudo Fortress and then leaving it, and it has to be a very specific one, as you'll you'll see. So, kind of the most inconvenient one to get to, actually, but it's no matter. Yeah, and so that, that jump that happened right there, when you drop off a Pona while using Ocarina and then hookshot 
uh, while like half on opponent, then get off opponent again, or get back on opponent, and then get back off opponent. You do that little jump there. So use that jump to get to that exit specifically. And again, he has to enter that that exit specifically to make this trick work. Let me do it again here. So here's a really big jump. Oh wow, opponent can kill them. I did not know that. <laughs> really? Did I just teach CFG something new about? Oh my god, I'm so excited. Oh, you can see, you can, you saw Link falling like in the background there. And so now he's gonna use Frozen Wind right as he voids out. Back in Jabu. So this looks very confusing. Um, it is very confusing, so you're right to think that. Yeah, so uh, when he... Because the reason he had to go through that specific entrance point in Gerudo Fortress is so that when he warps back into Jabu like this, the he just deleted Furrow's Wind and then set it again. The new Furrow's Wind point gets set at the same coordinates of the exit that he was at at Gerudo Fortress. So, whereas previously Furrow's Wind was set at the beginning of Jabu, Furrow's Wind is no longer set at the beginning of Jabu, it's set in that those specific coordinates. And hey, this is a nice cutscene. This is a real bathroom break, actually. And uh, did you RBA like right in Jabu? I, I missed it. I assume yes, you did. I actually did. Yeah. Um, so that what I did in in Jabu. I guess I'll take the time to explain it now. Um, is we warped and the room we were in was. Uh, let me see if I can describe it. It's the one that you go in that has like the switch on the bottom. That raises of the, the water. Map, and like yep, that raises the water. Yeah, it's that yeah, room. Yeah. Um, and I jumped down there. And RBA, uh, I forgot what exactly. The <laughs> I, I broken Goron sword. Broken Goron sword. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's right. RBA that, and um, that's actually another mistake in the run. One of the only other big ones is right there, because I should. What I should have done is I should have caught the bugs back in my real bottle, but I forgot to do that, and then continued on with the tasks and made like probably over an hour's worth of progress before I caught it. Ah. That's okay, because all we had to do was just get bugs somewhere else, and it's not that big of a deal, honestly. And but so the important Tad confirmed. So the important part of our being the Broken Goron Sword in Jabu <clears throat> is that uh, the Broken Goron Sword RBAs your medallions, and so by catching the bugs with Broken Goron Sword on seat right, it gave him a uh, Force Medallion, Water Medallion, Shadow, and Spirit Medallion. And later cutscene specifically triggers when you have Spirit and Shadow Medallion in your inventory. So by RBAing the Broken Goron Sword, that's what triggered the Light, light Arrow cutscene to trigger. Test is about two and a half hours. Um, if you can get, I actually said the official time in the beginning, but I don't know if Claim caught it. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I think we can just say it now. It's two hours twenty one minutes. Yeah, two twenty one. Uh, but if you want to guess the seconds and milliseconds, I'll be impressed if uh, anyone gets it. I'm pretty sure it was on the video title at the beginning. But for those who don't want to cheat, for those who don't want to cheat. So uh, this part of the cutscene is actually important, uh, this flashback. So again, when he did RBA in Jabu and he got a bottle on B, when you have a bottle on B and you go back and forward in time, when you become adult again, you'll have an item on your B button based on what item child had on C right. And so that flashback there, where it showed uh, Child Link again, that flashback actually counts as going back in time and then forward in time again. So that activates Bottle Adventure. That means at the end of this cutscene, he'll actually have a completely different item on his B button based on what Child had on C right.
Oh yeah, Fash brought up another good point. Normally when you go back and forward in time, Furore's wind deletes itself. But if you use the lighter cutscene, so if you were to, were to normally do Ball Adventure by going back and forward in time, then Furore's wind wouldn't be there anymore. But the lighter cutscene does not delete Furore's wind. So uh, it's really important that we use this for Ball Adventure. Yes, that is the only reason for what. Well, actually, we do need light arrows, so I guess not. I guess that's not the only reason, huh? Uh, Aknez, it's it's going f back and forward in time in general that deletes Furo's win location. So there's, I mean, there's only two times the game will actually check. You know, go back and forward in time. And one of them is lighter cutscene, the other is, you know, using the Master Sword. So it's unique in that aspect. So yeah, uh, after the cutscene, he now has Boomerang on B. And, uh, so that means that... Do you remember what item he had on C right as child? Was it fish? Mm. No, or it wasn't fish. Ho? Fash probably knows. I'll just, I'm just going to wait for him to reply. Well, whatever, whatever item you had on C right as child, uh, the item value it pointed to was the value of 13? 14? 14. Because that's the value of Boomerang. Yeah, it's 14. Yeah. So uh, that's how he has Boomerang on B, because it put the, value, the item value 14 on B. And it's also important to note, um, I know people have been asking if uh, Equip Swap, the new Equip Swap glitch, would be useful in this. And it kind of seems like it might be useful for Boomerang, but getting Boomerang would still require opening doors. So, here we are back at Jabu. And we're going to do a glitch called Zombie Walking. So it's when you void out and then you spawn with no heart. And you can actually still like move around and we can move into the loading zone for Baronade. Yeah, so the entire point of uh, going into Water Temple was just to be able to use Furrow's Wind, since you can't use it outside of dungeons. So you warp back into Jabba with those uh, weird coordinates that were used from Gerudo Fortress, which is really high up in the air. Uh, void Out, and then the Void Out causes you to die, which allows you to do the zombie walking. So you enter Baronade, but you're dead, and so you actually die as soon as you start the fight. But this is what the fairy is for. The fairy revives you, and now it's time to fight Baronade like normal. Or as normal as this looks. Yeah, this, this is actually normal. probably the least normal uh, Baronade fight you'll ever see. Because we only have Boomerang, yeah. so... Very normal. Very normal fight right here. Yeah, definitely... Yeah. Definitely I remember doing right. this when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But we still do have the sword, so we can just re-equip it after we've... Oh, dude, you got the... The, the extra hit without the boomerang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know that's how right. that's consistent? Get, uh... What's that? Do you know how that's consistent? Well, the way... I mean, the way that I got it is basically just making it so that Baronade is, like, kind of right up against the wall when he is down, so that when he gets up, he'll immediately come, like, right back out. You have to time it, like, really well, so I don't know how well it would work RTA. Okay. You could try it, though, for sure. All right. Uh, I've gotten it a few times, but it was, like, completely random. I don't know how to do it consistently. I've tried. So, anyway, um, the reason for those pots is because he had Boomerang on B, and equipping Sword would get rid of Boomerang, which means he couldn't stun Baronade anymore. So that's the uh, purpose for the pots. But then, once the last stun was done, he could equip Master Sword again and kill Baronade like that.
So this is two dungeons down, right? DC and Jabu. Yes, sir. Six more to go. So here in Zora's domain, King Zora is still blocking the way. Uh, do you want to explain this? That happens to go with the marimba that was playing. <laughs> Your mic cut out, and that just sounded really out of context. Uh, I think your mic's dead again. Anyway... <laughs> anyway, yeah, he had to do an A slide to get past King's Aura. It allows you to um, clip through rounded collision. And then here back in Lost Woods, gotta do RBA again in this grotto. Also use another A slide to get into the grotto without blowing up the rock. So gotta get more bugs here. And doing some damage buffering. And dying. Hello? I heard sounds, I didn't... Hey, hey. What's up? Alright, so once again, uh, the same thing he did in Zora's River earlier. Uh, he uh, spawned in water after dying with a bottle on B, so that spawns him with uh, nothing on his B button again. So now back to Sacred Forest Meadow, gonna go through the maze again, or above the maze again. And into Forest Temple. Hello? Hello. Fourth mic. Alright. Real excited to do I heard half that sentence. Uh, not right now. Okay. Oh yeah, that's a good point to bring up. Um, after doing RBA with the Broken Goron Sword, that actually deletes the Minuet of Forest. That's why you didn't use the Minuet to go back to Forest Temple. Yeah, that's a problem multiple times in the run. We'll, like, we have to delete a song that it would be nice to keep. And so Fora's Wind set in uh, Forest Temple, similar to how uh, what was done with Jabu with a Void Warp. Similar thing is going to be done with uh, Forest Temple. Yeah, the fade, faded buttons is because of having nothing on your B button. It kind of messes with uh, whether certain items are faded or not. That Mega Flip is super precise, by the way. Very precise. Painfully precise. God, that took me so long to do. So back to Gerudo Fortress. This is a very convenient place for Void Warps. Since you have a lot of options. Yeah, thankfully the exit that we need this time is just this one. That happens to be right next to Epona. And Epona is still here even after all this time. After ditching her like 30 minutes ago, 20 minutes ago. So, just like last time, gonna do a hookshot jump using uh, items on opponent glitch. And then 
He's gonna void out and use Ferozmin at the same time. And now we are going back to Forest Temple. You just can't see it. Yeah, this is Forest Temple. Don't worry. And so, specifically where he was in Forest Temple, that was the uh, the, the basement where that where you have to push that wall around. And uh, in that area, when that wall is unloaded, you can kind of walk around the, the side of the area and walk into the loading zone that way. for the strat I use here to kill Ganon, or, uh, Ganon. His MST task, um, inspired a lot of tricks in here. Yeah, that, that task is actually really good, and I would suggest, uh, watching it if anyone hasn't watched it yet. Yeah, that strat's so good. So what happens there is, uh, when when Phantom Ganon comes out of the painting, if you shoot something at him, either the bow or hookshot or whatever, he spins his staff, and it makes him vulnerable for a second. And so he shot the hookshot immediately as he came out of the painting to make him vulnerable, then just started slashing him over and over. Uh, he, he gets up once, but you just do the same thing as soon as he gets up. To essentially, there. it's essentially stun locking him. The the bomb had to be there actually because when he gets up, uh, he will move away too fast if you try to just keep attacking him. You have to hit him with something so he'll like kind of like use his block attack or I guess just block, and he'll be low enough so you can finish him off. Oh, that's interesting. And so here's a cutscene skip, he's just gonna die on the right frame, uh, where he'll get the medallion and not have to watch the cutscene. Is this actually the first cutscene skip slash wrong warp in the run? Yes, it is. Oh man. So yeah, got the forest medallion, forest temple complete, didn't have to watch the cutscene, and also Furrow's Wind is still there. I don't think that's gonna be useful, but um, yeah, when you do a Void Warp like that, it doesn't get rid of Fur Furrow's Wind. Still stays there. This is really a, cool method this is a very, of entering. Very, very precise clip. I was just gonna say. Yeah, it's a really cool method of entering Water Temple. There's a really precise place you can jump slash to clip out of bounds there. Now Water Temple is interesting. So the boss door isn't really that far away from the entrance of the dungeon, but you have to do a lot to get there. So you can do a lot of hovers to get out of bounds through the ceiling. And then you gotta hover all the way to the boss door, or almost all the way to the boss door at least. This is a really big hover here. Thank <laughs> you. 
And so he lands in this room. This is the room right before the boss room. And uh, from here you can just do the regular old boss key skip by hovering right in front of the door and then jump slashing into it. And this is better yeah. than just doing one consistent hover through the whole thing. And in that way, Water Temple is actually pretty much the same. Like, I mean, obviously, like, you have to hover to the, you know, uh, boss room antechamber. But it's pretty much the same, where you just go and do the boss key skip. Yeah, just just a one door difference. Oh yeah, actually, something I should mention about all this out-of-bounds stuff in dungeons is whenever you're in a dungeon, all of the collision in the dungeon is always loaded, and the boss loading zone is always loaded. So as long as whatever dungeon you're in is loaded, you can touch all of the floors and ceilings and whatever, wherever the dungeon is, and you can always get to the boss loading zone. It's just a matter of how are you going to get out of bounds, how are you going to navigate these out of bounds rooms, and how are you going to get to the boss room itself. Right, and that's actually the only reason why it's even possible to complete. And so that fight was pretty quick. Not a usual fight. I'll just, at the pasture, I'll just say that hover was probably like... Uh, maybe like a fifth or a sixth of like one of the hovers that's coming up. Yeah, that Morpha fight was um, actually I think Bloob, Blooby, Blooby, you know him. He's I, I saw someone ask before what inspired me, or like what made me get into tasking. It's it was literally just like joining the speedrun community and seeing. A bunch of tasses by like uh, you know blue and uh, I think Sonic Packer and stuff. The so more RBA here again with Poe on C right. Wait, 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 ZFG, shut up for a second. Okay. Nice. Hey. I don't actually know what that was. That was um. Uh, what's it called? Number one. We're number oh, one. That's oh. It. <laughs> right, okay. Alright, so, um... So, yeah, that was RBA again. With, uh... <laughs> with Poe on C right for, um... Refilling bomb shoes, essentially. Another 29 bomb shoes. Yeah, that's the good thing about, um, like I mentioned in the FAQ, basically just that because we can do RBA pretty much anywhere that we have a wall and a bomb, or rather a wall and an explosion or damage source, you can RBA. So as long as we keep that poke that we have in the bottle, we can then replenish our bomb to count to 29 almost any time we want. No, guys, I, I knew the song, I just didn't recognize it on the ocarina. Yeah, it's a little hard to make out, because it's on the Ocarina. Alright, so Shadow early here. Um, so, um, he did a super slide off a piece of grass there. And... Um, when you don't have a strength upgrade, like a Goron Bracelet or Silver Gauntlets or anything like that, when you try to pick up a grass uh, from far away, Link just kind of teleports to it. And so... He teleported to the grass really high uh, from the slopes with infinite sword glitch activated so he warped above the grass in the air and then could just side hop up to the ledge and walk around into Shadow Temple. And then from here in Shadow Temple he clipped into a little tiny piece of uh, ground that's like barely out of bounds and time for another hover. Yeah, originally this hover was going to be different. Uh, like Ben said, Ben, I believe, came up with this idea instead. Um, it's pretty cool. This is actually my favorite dungeon, um, I think. At least the, the, end, the end part of it is really cool. So I had to use bombs right there because there was just nothing but void right below me, so like, using a bomb shoot would just crash. Once I'm above land, though, I can use bombs. 
And all this hovering is to get past that one door to get into this room. Uh, if you're familiar with OOT speedruns, this is the room right before the hover boots, which is where boat skip is traditionally done. So from here, it's basically just boat skip. Well, a little bit different. And so this is the last room of Shadow Temple right before the boss room. Doing the boss key skip, and here is Bongo. And there goes Bongo. And so uh, that boss fight, you drop a bomb down the hole and it hits uh, Bongo's partially loaded hitbox. And so it disables the cutscene that happens when you fall into the room. And so Bongo's already stunned. There's just this giant un invisible hitbox right in front of you. You just stab it a bunch and he dies. And because uh, we RBA'd Shadow Medallion, we don't have to watch the cutscene here, so we can just take the blue warp. Yep, no cutscene skip necessary at all. More RBA, just for more chews again. Oh, and a dupe over light arrows. Yes, that is the only way we can use them, actually. And why is that? Uh, I actually completely forgot. <laughs> Alright, <laughs> I guess I'll explain that to you then. So, um... When you have, there's a few different components of what makes a bow actually work. So you need uh, the bow that you can actually equip. That can be either the regular bow, light arrows, fire arrows, or ice arrows. Oh, wait. Yeah, I remember now. You need a it's quiver. You need, you need the, uh, the quiver. Yeah, you need the quiver, which will actually let you hold arrows. If you don't have a quiver, you can't go above zero arrows. And the quiver was gotten from RBA and Kajiro way back earlier in the run. And then duping over light arrows is the third component. Where if you dupe over light arrows, the actual item that's equipped when you equip light arrows, on the item screen at least, is the bow slot. And so that puts a bottle over the bow slot when you dupe over light arrows. Also that's pretty cool, you can fall in the lava in that cutscene. Yeah. So by duping over light arrows, it puts a bottle in the bow slot, and something in the bow slot is what triggers arrow drops to happen. And so... Um, now that he has a bottle in the bow slot, he can find arrow drops and actually pick up arrows and shoot arrows. So this hover that we're going to be doing right you can actually not touch the loading zone if you hover up high enough, and so we use the fact that you can do this to hover past the loading zone, and then back around, um, and you'll, you'll see where we go. It's farther than it looks, by the way. Like, that white texture isn't the actual loading zone. It, the actual loading zone is invisible and extends out farther than that. And so this is the main room of Ganon's castle, the main trials area. All still loaded. And that mega flip was for trial skip. Yeah, that was the... Like you said, mega flip trial skip, which... If you know what that is, you'll know where I was. And here is a big okay. hover. So yeah, here's a, a bigger hover. This actually still isn't the biggest hover. Well, yeah. Uh, it's, it's pro well, hmm. Debatable. I think it anyway. is, I think it is. Yeah, one of the two. Anyway, 
So what we have to do here is clip out of bounds and stand on this little piece of land that's barely sticking out um, from the, the room so that we can continue to hover barely in between um, the wall of the, room, of the room we were just in and the wall of the next room. Um, and so we can maneuver our way in between these and uh, I wonder, I wonder where we're gonna go. I'm not even sure actually. I'm doing this live. We're gonna find out together. I'm so excited to find out too. Yeah, me too. this hover is even possible to do actually is the fact that um, as you will soon see we can land on a very very small um, piece of land that's inside one of the pillars on the stairs and RBA um, choose again in the middle of the hover so as you see we have 29 choose now yeah if that wasn't possible you just wouldn't have enough yeah, because it's, it's it's that big of a hover. The, the distance, and by the way, all these hovers are optimal. Like they have the optimal amount of um, height reached. Well, okay, this hover definitely takes the most explosives, I'm, I'm fairly sure. But there's another hover that might be longer, just because of the kinds of explosives that it uses. And here's Ganondorf. All that, that giant hover just for this. Yep, just to get up here. No, the, the hover is not the, the one up to the main room in Fire Temple. We don't go there. That's a good guess, though. That's probably one of the like tallest maps. Ganondorf. Alright, what were you gonna say? Just that if someone could guess where exactly the hover up, and and like they don't already know the route, I'd be kind of impressed because it's a kind of a weird spot. Yeah. So that was a pretty standard Ganondorf fight. Just light arrow, crouch stab a bunch. Time your crouch stabs right, and you stun lock him. He can't get out. Okay, I'm not gonna do door puns most of the time, but I think Ganondorf is actually kind of good. Jay, just own it, man. Like you don't, you don't have to like say. No, I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do any more. No, that's the only door pun. I, no other puns are acceptable.
But Ganondorf, just, it just has a good ring to it, you know, like... Yeah, I mean, it would... Because he's the enemy. Doors are the enemy. He is the, he's the leader of the doors. Also, I hope you guys like this cutscene. You know, the last time I heard that it didn't end too well. More RBA once again to get bottle on B. And this time he's also going to do something special here. So right there he hovered just barely off the edge and was able to do, if you're like super close to the edge you can do ocarina items and fall down. And so if you, if you roll like you're on, it says that you're on the floor for like just enough time. And so uh, you can play a warp song there and void out, and so he just did a void warp into the Prelude of Light cutscene. And so this is how you skip the door of time the other way. Yes, Door of Time does count as a door, so to opening the Door of Time is not allowed. Yeah, so uh, we actually got Pretty Little Light earlier on in the run when RBAing the Poachers saw. And uh, so R being the poacher song gives you Prelude of Light along with a few other songs. So that's why he was able to still play it. But if you have the song in your inventory, the cutscene still plays anyway. And so playing the Prelude of Light, it of course it, it loads Temple of Time, and then the Void Warp loads you into Temple of Time with the map loaded and coordinates of um, of Ganon's Tower Collapse, which loaded the back room of Temple of Time and started the cutscene. And now we're child again. Wonder why. Yes. So do I. Oh yeah, so we still have the timer from the from the Ganon's Castle collapse, so that warp just uh deleted the um got rid of the timer real quick. When you have a timer like that expire, uh, and you don't have any item in your, or if you have an item in your trade item slot that is not um, odd mushroom, eye drops, or eyeball frog, then it just reloads the current area. So if you if you're noticing that I'm pulling chews, it's because I actually need exactly 17 chews um, for another like BAA thing later on. Like it needs to be 17, and there's actually only three places that I can pull chews without losing time. I think maybe there's more. I just haven't thought of any because as child we never got a shield. So the only way that we can release a chew is by actually pressing A to set it down on the ground, and that like wastes time, because that's like a whole animation you have to watch. But we got it fast. And also, this is, like, I've like <laughs> barely made it in time for day. The, the only reason that we have to do this is because we can't, like, skip uh, having to wait out the night cycle.
Dang, sorry for the spoiler. So we got opponent's song, and opponent's already been used for quite a few fancy glitches, so I assume just more coming up. Yeah, pretty safe bet, I think. Another door skip. A different door skip. Different kind of door skip. Yeah. A slower one. Oh hey. You didn't you didn't get Kakiri Sword, did you? Nope. We should explain that. Probably. Yeah, so um if you don't get Kakiri Sword as child, then become adult and then go back in time as child again, you automatically get Kakiri Sword. And uh you may notice he also has hammer on B right now. And uh, again, that's bottle adventure. If you have a bottle on your B button as an adult, you go back and forward in time. Then the game will put an item on adult's B button based on the item child had on C right. So on C right, he had Poe as child, and Poe points to your bomb shoe count. Your bomb shoe count was 17. 17 is the value of hammer, and that's why hammer is on B. Someone asked, why not get opponent's song in child one? Uh, can't. Can't do it. Not possible. Wait, really? Wait, no, what? Yeah. Uh, I, I forgot why exactly if Fash is still here, he can say. But I, I know it's because it has something to do with, like, day-night cycle. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Oh, yeah, that's right. No, no, no. It gets, uh, opponent's song gets deleted with some of the RBA stuff. Oh, right, so right. Do it afterwards. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, see, that's what I mean when I when I say that, like, you know, this was a collective effort. Like, you think I routed all this shit? No, that would have taken me so much longer. I, I did route, like, I mean, I made the actual task, so, you know, like, individual room routing is what I did. But, like, the general overall route was not me. And so that's another cutscene skip there. He grabbed the edge of the bridge right as the cutscene started, which causes a glitch where uh, you just fall out of bounds, and, you know, falling out of bounds during the cutscene skips the cutscene, but you get the song. Now it's time to go to Fire Temple. So just an easy uh, clip right there. We can get into the actual, uh, you know, Daruni's room over here. And then obviously it's not loaded, you can't see it, but you do another clip of the same kind. Um, and then right now where we are is underneath the ground, beneath the, uh, the boss door. So we're like right in front of the boss door, but a little underneath it. And here's Vlogia.
Nice weird shot. Can't waste those bombs, man. Yeah, so uh, Mawaja has two hitboxes, one for the f uh, one that flies around and one for the one that pops out of the hole. The one that uh, flies around goes into the last hole it flew into, which at the beginning of the fight is that hole right in front of you. So by doing that weird shot, he can weird shot that hitbox while Mawaja is trying to attack him from popping out of the holes and uh, just do a bunch of damage just with a weird shot like that, which makes that fight super fast. You, the only way to kill Volvagia though is after stunning Volvagia with the hammer. So you can get you can get him down to zero health without the hammer, but you can't kill him without the hammer. And he does uh, Ocarina items on the edge of the blue warp to move around. So he can do this wrong warp. Touching the, the uh, door, but not using it. Touching the door, but not using it. Yes, that's actually a, um, a bit of a complicated wrong warp. So uh, when, when the blue warp is going on, you kind of have this floaty property, which is why he was kind of floating off the, off the edge there. And so he clipped out of bounds and did a jump. And that jump plus the floaty property gave him a really, really big jump. So he could reach the reach the loading zone for the boss door from behind. And then uh, you have to hit the loading zone at the same time that the game is trying to start the cutscene for giving you the fire medallion. And that causes the wrong warp, which is un yet another wrong warp to Ganon's castle. Yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, you know, we had to kill Ganon again because we can't. And we're going to do another uh, RVA here, except this time um, we're actually going to use one of the rocks that fall down uh, to, to time it with this glitch. And it's actually Ooh. like, I can't believe that I, <laughs> I got that just like first try. There's, there's a couple really of things cool. in here that, that like sound really hard, but like I just happened to get pretty quick. And then there's stupid shit that I spent like hours on that was actually really easy. No, that was really cool. And so, yet another Prelude of Light Void Warp back to Temple of Time, although this time there's no cutscene, so you can actually see how high he loads from. Yeah, that, that's where you actually spawn. Like, what, uh, the other time when we spawned right into the cutscene. That's the only reason we had to uh, go back to the Temple of Time and use like a warp sign to get there, just so we could expire the timer. Because if we went adult like that, um, with the timer still on, it would uh, mess up the glitch we're doing later. And so again, since he had Bottle on B when he went back in time last time, it activates Bottle Adventure once again and gives him Furrow's Wind on B because uh, his uh, bomb chew count was 13 with Poe on C right. 13 is the value of Furrow's Wind. Oh, that timer he had was the timer from Ganon's Castle Collapse. When you do a Void Warp away from the Castle Collapse, you keep the timer. But uh, sometimes the timer is useful, a lot of times it's not. Yes, this commentary is live.
So now off to Gerudo Fortress with lots more Hesses and Mega Flips. Oh man, living dangerously. Uh, th he is extremely close to getting caught by those guards there. Oh, he got caught anyway. Darn. So you got on and off opponent there, what was the purpose of that? Um, Bash can answer that, that one. <laughs> Ah, okay. So that's a really cool method of gate skip. Um, so you get caught on purpose. Nice sign. So you get Fuck caught on. Sign. Yeah. So you get caught on purpose so that you're at the jail, and from the jail, the the way you've probably seen it done in a lot of other speedruns is using hover boots, but you can also just do a mega flip from the railing there to skip. Um, to skip that gate. And looks like we're finally getting over to Spirit Temple. Oh, it was for temporary B button. Okay. Uh, I don't quite know the specifics of how opponent temporary B button works. Do you know? No. I it's some it's some weird voodoo magic. Yeah, it's some weird like really technical stuff that you don't really have to know to do it. So uh, here's spirit hover, except without hover boots. Got to hover up the outside of Spirit Temple. This fucking this fucking boy thinks he's slick. Check it out. Oh yeah. Okay, so so what Ben said, um, Furo's win is now your temporary B button state, but you have uh, Master Sword equipped right now. And uh, getting on and off opponent is what triggers this uh, temporary B button stuff. It's kind of weird. And so without hover boots, uh, spirit hover is a lot different. So you don't even have to go to the other hand, you can just hover up here. And here's mirror shield. Alright. Spirit is also maybe my second favorite temple. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it, it's this is pretty crazy. That Hess clipped him out of bounds just barely, and then you can mega flip uh, into the middle of that crawl space to load the next room. Normally, only child is supposed to be able to go through that crawl space to load the room. Really nice hover to... Oh man, there's so much going on. Yeah, there, there's a, a ton going on in like a there's, very small amount of time. So clipped out of bounds and hovered out of bounds using the torch. Then did a weird shot into the next room because the next room has a hook shotable wall. Then he climbed up there and did another hook shot onto a, a hook shotable wall in the next room. And right now he's in the main room of Spear Temple. And he's climbing the big statue in the main room. And so now he's doing a hover, I think, to get out of bounds, or...? Uh, no. We are actually right now hovering up towards the mouth of the statue. Okay. And like I said, a lot of these, uh, segments will be revisited, uh, after the whole task is over. And so here is... The boss door.
Yeah, so th for the longest time, this was the problem. The, the issue was getting from here to, like, uh, the next room, which is the room that, like, Twin Ropa is actually in. Um, so, yeah, we'll, you'll see how we do that. Yeah, because th there are two doors separating this room and Twin Ropa. That's an issue. Having some fun? Uh, just a little. Fun's always good. So what he was doing there is luring the iron knuckle all the way to the wall to use the hookshot clip to get out of bounds and hit the loading zone. So even though you're not ever supposed to be able to open that door from behind and hit that loading door from loading zone from behind, if you get out of bounds you can actually hit it and uh, enter the spear temple from the boss door entrance and set for Rose win there, which is going to be important for later. Yes, we do need that bomb drop. We need almost every single bomb we have right now. And yes, if you guessed it, this is the hover. So we have to hover um, up to... Can you guess? I'm not sure. Actually, I mean, the map for this for Spirit Temple is pretty big, and you can actually like hover to pretty much any room you want, like from out of bounds here. But I think we probably only have enough bombs to go like where we are going, which is that little hole you see in the ceiling. Also, to note why he's using bombs instead of bomb chews, dropping a bomb chew here would crash since it's out of bounds. And there's not really, unlike a uh, in other hovers like Shadow Temple and Water Temple, where you can hover above land to just make uh, the bomb shoes not crash, there's really no place you can use bomb shoes to not crash, at least not yet in this part of the hover. I actually did this uh, hover, like I tasked the whole thing, only to discover that I was like one explosive short or something from making it with the amount of explosives that I still need. So I had to like redo the entire last section for that as well to go back and get a bomb drop. Technically, if you if this task was on GameCube, yes, you you would be able to use choose out of bounds, but I mean. I'm not gonna- I would have to run it on- I'd have to use Dolphin, and it's like, that's weird to do that. Also, we need 1.0 anyway, for the run to work, so... Tell MTA to do all Dungeons No Doors Master Quest, because he does Master Quest stuff. So, we're finally up here. We made it. Pretty sick Mega Flip there. Uh, this yes, is to, really cool. So you can uh, move these snake statues. These snake statues are unusually uh, loaded without um, loading that room by opening the door. There's very few things in the game that are loaded like that, and that's one of them. And then right there, we just did a weird shot, and then hookshot at the chains to get back. And now it's time to leave again. So the reason we needed to do that was because we need to do uh, the boss key skip again, but 
with a certain set of circumstances also uh, carried over, so it's important for the boss to skip. Yeah, also important to note, Furrow's Wind is still set in Spirit Temple, right outside the boss door. So we'll be going back to Spirit Temple once uh, circumstances are good. All the bombs you need. Yeah. No, no uh, six bomb drops at the same time though. Unfortunately, was not at the cards for that patch. So now it's time for Deku Tree. So by going out of bounds there, you can skip the load trigger that um, loads the main area where Decatree is, and that skips loading Decatree's mouth, and Decatree's mouth is what prevents Adult Link from entering Decatree. So without that loaded, you can just walk right in. And you can do a mega flip right there to clip out of bounds with a ground clip. And just barely, there's like one little piece of, I don't know if it's like a ceiling or a wall, you can jump slash. That just barely makes it into Goma's room. It's super close. It's, it's a wall, I think. You'll see it later on. Nice. Yeah, this was also in Homer Funky's uh, MSC test. So now more Ocarina items on the edge of the blue warp, probably for a wrong warp. So this next wrong warp is commonly referred to as Ganondor, How but uh, but uh, it, it's not. I guess you got to do it a little bit differently if we want to avoid the door. And this trick was uh, also in the last uh, No Door with Any Percent run, so if you've seen that, then you will remember it, maybe. Yeah, so he's hovering all the way up here to uh, get to the top of this, uh, the wall right here. And he also did a mid-air ground jump with an action swap by trying to pull out the hook shot, or trying to pull out another chew when there was too many explosives on the screen to pull, out, pull one out. And then he hits the loading zone for the door, at the same time, the game is trying to start the Kakiri Emerald cutscene, which wrong warps you to Ganon's castle once again. So we had to do it to him again, you know, third third death. Poor guy.
So here's Void Warp. You hit the loading zone for um, for one of the uh, loading zones below at the same time you void out, which loads one of the very bottom rooms of the Castle Escape. While Link ha has a very high coordinate above and uh, can just fall down and get right to the end of the escape. The kiss. The kiss. That is, I think, the second uh, NPC we have entered in this game, and we will enter one more NPC. Interesting. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Streamer, you forgot Spirit Temple. Huh? Oh shit. Shut the stream down. Sorry, guys. See you guys next time. It's okay, we'll fight Ganon anyway. We'll like, pretend like we're going to fight him. Yeah. If you read the uh, FAQ, then you will know what is about to happen. I'm sure those bugs will attack Ganon fine. Those bugs can do it. Oh no, you died, but played a song at the same time. Yep. Yeah, so uh, Ganon's too powerful. We're just gonna leave. Kind of spooked. He kind of spooked us a little bit, so... Actually, that's the only way to get... Uh, well, maybe not the only, but one of the only convenient ways uh, to get Swordless B... Um, without altering the temp B value that we need. Alright, so Furrow's Wind is now on B. So, this is kind of hard to explain. I might yeah, explain this, this wrong. Is, this is the most complicated part. Of yeah, the, so, if you remember a long, long time ago, he got on and off Epona, and I asked, why'd you get on and off Epona? So when you get on and off Epona, um, there's this thing called temp B. It's like a, a temporary... The game stores a temporary B value, and his temporary B value at that time was Furrow's Wind, and then by going to the Ganon fight, uh, by going to the Ganon fight, he and leaving and dying, he reactivates the temp B so that he can get Furrow's Wind back on B after dying. Then he warps back to Spirit Temple, and does a hookshot jump with the Gold Skulltula. It's the if you guys have seen my 100% runs recently, uh, it's the Gold Skulltula hookshot jump where you. Uh, you collect the gold Skulltula, but uh, you don't actually um, collect it fully, so you hookshot at the same time. You grab the token at the same time you hookshot something, which allows you to do <laughs> a giant... <laughs> Yo. It allows that's, you that's, to you, do you a can, giant hookshot jump. Light. See, you can do a... <laughs> 
a giant hookshot jump so you can enter the spirit boss door again. And the reason you want to enter the spirit boss door this time is because this time you have... <laughs> This time you have Furrow's Wind on... This is too complicated. This time you have Furrow's Wind on B. You have Furrow's Wind on B this time. Last time you couldn't set Furrow's Wind in the boss room. Because uh, Furrow's Wind wasn't on B. You can only set it outside the boss room. So this is why you needed to make this return trip to Spirit Temple. So now that Furrow's Wind is set in the boss room, we come back to Goron City. And this is the trick that... Really, that is actually what made this run possible in the first place. Um, all Dungeons No Doors was not possible until this trick right here. So, Furrow's Wind... We, Go ahead. We needed... We, I was just going to say, we needed a way to Void Warp here without ISG, because we needed uh, Furrow's Wind on B. Um, and this is just recently-ish discovered, so this is the only way we know to do that. And so, the specifics of this Void Warp, when you do a Void Warp, um, it loads the specific room number of whatever area you were in. And the room number we need to load is the room number 3, which is where Twinrova is. In most areas of the game, the first area you enter is not room number 3, it's room number 1. And usually to get to some kind of room number 3, you need to go through a door. Goron City is the one exception to this, so if you war Void Warp in Goron City, you can get room number 3 to load. So you do Death Hole, which is, you you die as you enter a grotto, and uh, it does this thing where it, it always, when you get out of that area, you're always trying to, it, it's always trying to warp you back to where that grotto is. Okay, and I, I should explain quickly, the reason we have to save warp here, is just because we don't have a sword on our equipment screen. So we just have to set first wind, save warp, and then warp back. Just real quick detour. Yeah, so again, for the void warp thing, um, so when you do the death hole glitch, it's, it's always trying to warp you back to where the grotto is, unless your camera is positioned a certain way or you're too, you're too far away from it. So the goal is to use Furrow's Wind so that the text comes up, and then after that, the grotto warps you back there, and you void out. You fall out of bounds. That way, you can run, you can use Furrow's Wind as you void out to warp to the Spirit Temple boss room with room three loaded in the right coordinates, so that you can actually enter room three. Then, as he said, um, set Furrow's Wind again, so you can save warp, so you can get Master Sword back, Furrow's Wind back in, and now you are in the Twin Rova fight without opening a door. We did it. We're here. <laughs> if you don't understand, it's okay. I hardly understood what I just explained. So. Oh, me too. I hardly <laughs> knew what the, what the hell I was doing. What I was uh, doing this part. I mean, I knew what I was doing. I just didn't know why it worked. I yeah, we're that. we're all in this together, Chad. It's okay. Yeah, Jay, I want to see this this fight in all your runs. I'll try. So if you notice we're... Wait, maybe your viewers already know this. I don't know, you could probably do this RTA, but yeah, you hookshot Venerova. I just didn't know that. Yeah, I was uh... Mess that up. Okay, that was weird. The video froze for a second. I'm not sure if that was on yeah, my end or... No, that, that actually, that was the end code. Oh, that's cool. Which I didn't... Yeah, I didn't know that was the thing, so... Thanks, Ben. Yeah, when we were trying to upload this, we were having trouble getting an end code without that happening for some reason. And was it always in that specific place? 
that was there were a couple places there are more places where it did that but i haven't seen any of them except that one okay no it's okay man i like i really don't mind because the thing is like if you want to download the bk2 file and play this back you can and it'll work fine so it's legit I'm probably going to submit this to past videos. I don't know if they'll accept it, but I mean, I don't really give a shit. And that's the end of Spirit Temple. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, that's, that's so, all the dungeons, isn't it? That That's all of them, man. So we, we just got a little, little cleanup to do. Yeah, you gotta beat Ganon to finish the game. Right? That, yes. Definitely that. Is Ganon going to die again? Place your bets. Oh, this is a cool trick here. This uh, mega, or this ground clip. Yeah, not a nice way to get to Zora's main quickly. And even more RBA. I really like this test that I'm about to do up here. If you like pause it, there's some really like wacky frames with the camera. So we have to unfreeze King Zora because he's still frozen right now. So we do that extremely quickly. Yeah, the way he got unfrozen there is uh, if you're going up the stairs and you pull out a trade item or something that has some text in it, um, and then King Zora loads, and then you just reload the room, he becomes unfrozen. And yeah, if you hold R, R, hold R while he's how supposed many, to give you... How many times you... have you explained this to your chat, I wonder? I don't know. Too many. So you hold R while you're, while King Zora is supposed to give you the Zora tunic, and he gives you the Eyeball Frog instead. Shoutouts to Speed Frog. Oh, was that a timerless? Or no, 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 never mind. You have computer tunic on. So when you get the frog, you get a timer with it, and he needs to get uh, a frozen timer. And so what he did there is void it out right as the timer was going to expire. And so now the timer is stuck at zero. And also the reason the timer didn't expire immediately when he warped is because in Death Mountain Crater there's the heat timer. And so while you're not, um, while you don't have Goron Tunic on, the timer can't expire because the heat timer takes priority. And my bad, the timer is at 1, not 0. But it is frozen. Oh yeah, so since you've beaten Forest, Fire, and Water Temple, it's now possible to get the Nocturne of Shadow. This will be on YouTube, yeah.
There are no dungeons left. All of the dungeons have been beaten. It's now time to just go beat the game. The only dungeon left is the game itself. Hi, YouTube. Oh no, another freeze. Come on, Ben. Oh shit. That, maybe, actually, maybe that wasn't a freeze. Maybe that was uh, just like the screen not going all the way black. Maybe not. Oh, black. actually, yeah, that might make sense. That makes sense. Because like, yeah, like it, because the emulator, goes emulator thing's weird. Dark all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah, it might be that. Never mind, Ben's not guilty. At least not yet. We're not sure yet, but he might not be guilty. Undecided. Jury's still out on that one. I wouldn't completely blame Ben, because, like, it happened with me, too, so it's clearly really not either of our, all, either of our faults. Using a glitch uh, called Down A here, so we can use uh, Forest Wind. Yeah, sp it's specifically Down A with uh, Swordless with nothing on your B button. When you do that, uh, your items retain whatever equipability they had when you do the glitch, which means that, uh, say you have um, an item that you can equip on C right, if you then equip, say, Forest Wind on it, Forest Wind then can be used. Uh, even if you're not normally supposed to be able to use Furrow's Wind there. So now Furrow's Wind is set in Kakariko right after the Nocturne, sh Nocturne cutscene. More items on opponent shenanigans. So by shooting the hookshot there, he stored a hookshot jump. So the next time he gets off opponent or does something to like leave the regular opponent state, he'll get a big jump. I wonder when that's gonna happen. Whoa, that's a big Whoa, jump. There he goes. So he activated Furrow's Wind right as he entered Lon Lon, which is, uh, I guess it's technically a Void Warp, kind of. Uh, it, it loads um, Lon Lon with the coordinates of where Furrow's Wind was. Nice. Third NPC entered. So it's important to note, Ferrara's Wind is still in Kakariko. That did not delete Ferrara's Wind. And also made his exit so that it's essentially coming from... Uh, it's essentially coming from Kakariko into Lon Lon, right? Yeah. I guess. 
Which is an important distinction from Hyrule Field into Lon Lon. Yeah, yeah. And the reason why I had to like slow down on Epona is because if I was... I was literally too fast, guys. I was too fast. And I needed to wait for day. And so that wrong warp that just happened, so that frozen timer he got earlier, the frozen timer will unfreeze when certain kinds of text boxes come up. And one of the... One text box that will unfreeze it is Malin's text box right before you start the uh, the opponent race, like the the mini game you do to get the cow in the house, basically. And so the timer unfreezes right as the the horse mini game is starting. That horse mini game also sets a flag that allows for wrong warping. So and um, the timer expiring is supposed to warp you back to entering Lon Lon Ranch from Kakariko, which is how, which is only possible with that Furrow's Wind Warp inside Lon Lon Ranch. And so, with your exit being from Lon Lon Ranch, from Kakariko to Lon Lon Ranch, with the uh, timer warp with the opponent minigame, you get wrong warped to the Ganon fight. All right, so here we are. No memes, no fucking more foreplay. This is it. We're go we're going again. Yeah, this is the actual end. All dungeons have been beaten. No doors have been opened. This is the way we end it. Ganon was too strong last time, but I think we can do it this time. Hey gamers. Whoa, hey. what's up gamer? Yeah, I just wanted to say that I endorse this evil. Yeah. Whoa. That's a big man, endorsement. That's a, that's huge, man. I, I'm gonna get so many sponsors from that shit, you don't even know. Dude, Ganon's really dead. Like that. That, that last hit, that was really cool. Yeah, that that, was, the whole fight's really cool, like, like spinning, spinning him around. Controller, like, like trying to get weird angles, and I just got that. I was like, that works. And there it is. There it is. That is Ocarina of Time, all dungeons, no doors. Not a single door was opened Not in the making one. of this test. So yeah, ho hope you guys enjoyed that test. I thought it was amazing. Thanks, Jay. Hey. 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 Congrats. Right, so, uh, What's up, Ben? I don't know. If, I don't know if you want to let the credits play or just. Uh, I, I think we can jump right into the special thing. That's fine. All right. Um, hey, I just I just wanted to say that was cool. I'm 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 glad we finally did this. For all those people, I I think we, you guys were talking about earlier. This this has been in the works for I think two and a half years now. So it's really cool that it's finally done. That's uh, it's it's really actually quite epic. Word word. Yeah, it's. it's been a long Probably one of the most amazing accomplishments done in OOT. 
I, I'm I'm going to go out on a spicy limb and say that it is the most technically impressive OOT test on the market at the moment. So the market. I would agree. You, you, you folks here in the chat watching this live, you are watching a cultural event right now. This is culture. Get cultured. Hell yeah. Dude, I I'll fucking wear that all day, man. Are you kidding me? Like, this, this run is so cool. Like, it just, I don't know. You, you, like it couldn't have been possible without knowing like all this stupid shit that like we wrote down on ZSR. Hey Taylor, I just wanted to say congratulations for that. You did this Trusted Speed Run so fast. It's really amazing. It's really optimized. Yo, and thanks, man. I've waited for this since so many years now. <laughs> this is really cool to see that now. So yeah, thank you and congrats again. Thanks. That was I'm a tester, by the way. Hi. A very good task indeed. And, and uh, uh, yeah, so we got we got all the boys in here now, or most of them. We got some of them, I should say, a handful of boys. Leading up to this, there were like maybe about a year or so ago when we were really cranking down, trying to route this out and find ways to do it. There would maybe be like. You know, just 20 people bouncing ideas around for days and days going like, oh, you know, maybe we could do this. And, you know, we'd be like, oh, we finally got it and we figured it out. And then we'd be like, no, we can't. We can't do it that way. We did a roadblock. This cycle just happened for like a year. And uh, so it's like, man, it's so fucking cool to see this finally happen. Yeah, I've heard the discussion for like a year, maybe even longer, even before Discord was around. Back was, when uh, was, IRC, yeah. we still used IRC. We had a Skype Sweden. room. Skype, yeah. <laughs> I, I was never too involved in the routing, but I was always like peeking in every now and then, always hoping that it would get a little bit closer to finishing. And yeah. it's really, it's really nice to finally see the finished product. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad all the uh, all the degenerate grind, like task grinds that I did for like fucking <laughs> months was was uh, uh, paid off. I, I cannot believe you finished. I know I've said it so many times. I cannot believe you finished this task as fast as you did. That was like, I mean, yeah, I thought trying, it was going to take longer. I'm not trying to say anything, but uh, <laughs> there were there were some comical moments in the uh, in the past two no door stasses. So, yeah. like, I knew I knew you really wanted to crack down on this one. I just thought it was going to take a lot longer. Yeah, like, no, for for the first couple, I um, didn't take it. Like, I mean. Let's be honest. Part of the whole meme was that like it wasn't like there wasn't a ton of effort put into it, but this one I really I really wanted to actually like make it cool and make it optimal. And I mean I did that sure, but like that was also everyone else you know who worked on it, all you guys helping me out, uh, telling me when I'm slow. Yeah, if you compare this to the very first no doors task you made, you've improved a lot in terms of just optimization as well. That's cool. I, I'm I'm glad to hear that. It's really actually hard for me to tell like if this is good or not. I just kind of do it. Shout out to, honestly, yeah. If you guys have anyone you want to shout out that's like not in the credits or something, go ahead. I just want to shout out everyone who I like used one of your videos on YouTube. Like, there's some people who have made task tutorials for this game and they're on YouTube, and that's actually that was actually tremendously helpful uh, for me like i know fox made a good one any just anyone who's like documented anything thank you you made this possible yeah i want to thank uh fox and uh because every time i had a task question i'd go to him because he knows so much about tasks I'd like to thank uh honestly everyone except greg <laughs> yeah i mean everyone, everyone... Who even watched this task, heard of this task, even people who haven't. I mean, all those guys, I just want to, you know, I feel a special connection to you as a human being, you know, except Greg. Yeah. <laughs> I want to re shout out Kafta. Oh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, if, you, if you don't know who Kafta is, he's the silent legend of this game. He's the single most important Ocarina of Time speedrunner. Well, debatable. Kafta's actually, he's the person who got me involved in this test. He was like trying to figure out a way to do Water Temple without opening a door. And he's like, hey, Ben, come help me out. And I was like, 
Sure. Nice. Yeah, I remember. I remember you guys uh, talking about that. I, I remember, you know, before I started working on this, what for was confirmed possible. I would like hear stuff about it, and um, I remember that was one of the things. But yeah, uh, Jay, you wanna play the play the shit or what? Yeah. All right, we can go into it. Uh, before yeah, we start, okay. um, I want to read like uh, what nerds said to read out. This is like some really technical stuff. <laughs> Probably gonna say half the stuff wrong. I guess I can just start the video and uh, read it out. Yeah, yeah, you can just. You can just All right. It. So here's the special thing. Um, nerds, nerds with game made a special uh, script that it displays all the uh, collision for for the out of bounds sections of the run. So I guess we'll just play it out. So there's a lot of. Oh, this is really loud. There's a lot of out of bounds stuff in this run. And. Um. So here is the out of bounds portions with collision viewer. It it has like some funky uh, rainbow colored polygons out of bounds, but you actually get to it's, see it actually, like it works really well because like the texture is good because if it was just like a solid color, it would be hard to distinguish like depth and stuff. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so here you can see how close uh, it makes it to Goma's room in Deku Tree. I guess I should actually just read the stuff after the whole thing's over. So here's the basement of Bomber the Well. You can actually see where you clip through the ceiling here. Yeah, and this this makes all these sections look like <laughs> way cooler. Like when you can see what's going on. Yeah, we can actually understand what's going on. So yeah, it's kind of like a wall. Some of them are really interesting to see how clutch it is sometimes. My personal favorite is the uh, the movement getting into spirit boss room. Oh yeah, that, that's definitely a good one. <clears throat> I think this this next part is Jabu. Yeah, so now you can actually make out this room a bit better. This is the room where you press the switch to raise the water. And this is where this RBA is done. Who's in the chat? Uh, everyone in the in the no doors chat right now. Me, Taylor, sniping, Kazalek, aka Kita, Fash, who is not going to talk. Ben and Amaterasu. Oh, oh wait. Totally saw, oh shit. Light up for a Yo. Hey. Oh, Fash said oh, something. Hey. Fash. Fash isn't the only one that's lit up. <laughs> Yo, word. Oh. Yeah, so you can see that um, the second time uh, in Jabu, you did a little like clip in that corner too. Yeah, which, you can see where the where the ledge clip happens. The Here's Forest Temple. So this is that uh, circular room at the bottom. In the basement. This is the hover for water was really weird because, like, if you notice, I just kind of like pop up after that one hover. Like, I just get a bunch more height, and I have no idea how that happened. Yeah, just... is that, it looks like it's actually like a tiny piece of land you can stand on or something. Oh, oh actually it is, it is. That's, yeah. that must be what it is now, because I noticed I could like, still kind of move, or like, do something with ISG that was weird, I forgot. Yeah, yeah you snapped no. to the ground. 
I have no idea why that exists there. Like, I can't think of a single spot in the entire game that works like that. It's probably just a side effect of the way the polygons are laid out, rather than like an intentional thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it wasn't intentional. I'm sure they had all dungeons, no doors in mind while they were <laughs> Yeah, for sure, for sure. Honestly, there's a couple of things that make it seem like it was. There's some things that are like... I'm going to say the Void Warp into Jabu specifically is like... The fact that that works, that the core... Yeah, that's actually up, really crazy. Okay, so Shadow is super fucking cool. Like, this is seriously... Yeah, this is probably I, I one of the coolest. It. Shadow and Spirit are the coolest parts of this. Because, I mean, I, I, I saw you guys all really like Shadow, but, you know, it's hard to tell, like, where you actually are, so this will make it much clearer. Like, like uh, if you watched OT speedruns regularly and you see boats skip done a lot, uh, you'll like this a lot. Because this kind of, like, shows you what boat skip looks like in more detail. And especially the difference, the way boat skip is done in this. Actually, I changed my mind. My favorite one's uh, Jabu because uh, that was my idea. Okay, fair enough. All right, good yeah. reason. Yeah, some people will tell you it wasn't, but uh. I think they're making this, uh, they're trying to work on this to be available on the practice ROM. It's not available yet, but I think it's a work in progress. Um, yes, he, he did say that he was trying to implement it last time I talked to him. Yeah, so this room is uh, the room right before Hover Boots. You can actually see, like, kind of how Boat Skip is going on in this now. Dude, that collision's so, so small. Yeah, that, that collision is I know, small. it's... Like, there's just a little <laughs> spot that's not about. It's, and I, I, I can't believe you can even, like, just jump side hop it. But yeah, so this side hop is magical. Oh my god, that looks amazing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how did it even make it? It was, it was real close. It was real <laughs> close. I, I actually thought it, it might have been not possible. And so this room he lands in right there is actually the, the Deku Scrub room in Ganon's castle. The one that no one seems to know about. Uh, I knew about it. I don't think you did. And don't worry, so, I did I did speed up the hovers in this. So you don't you don't have to sit through all of them. Or I mean you do, but they're just faster. Oh, did you encode this or did nerds encode it? I encoded it. Uh, okay. nerds actually I downloaded the video and then I like arranged it differently than he did. But oh, he made the encoding. Okay. Alright. That's right. And so this is that uh, tiny piece of land he's able to stand on mid-hover to do RBA again. You can see how tiny that little place was. And that he's like constantly almost going back in bounds. <laughs> yeah, I had a hard time grabbing the bugs without going in bounds. Yeah, actually when, when we had Calf to test that, he didn't think it was going to be possible to pick the bugs back up, which actually would have been really annoying. Would suck, yeah. It would have been really bad. Um, yeah. But he got it to work. <clears throat> this here's Fire Temple. Fire Temple boss key skip.
Yeah, so once again, this is a this is a script that was made to allow uh, viewing the collision where like normally in the game this is not view viewable. This is all just like blackness, but it's a it's a script that allows all the collision to be shown for easier viewing. So you can actually see what's going on here. This is probably the best part. Yeah, this one's really good. Cuz this Wait, which one? Spirit. Oh, yes. That's even amazing. even knowing exactly, like... No, it's still know. cool, because it's just so fast. Well, I'm saying, even, like, watching the test and, like, knowing exactly what is done in Spirit Temple, I still have no clue what's going on, and, like, I routed it. I, so I love it's... that. I love the fact that, like, none of us really, like, know, like, why this is even a thing, but we just made it. Yeah, so that's the hookshotable wall in the room with the the sun that you have to shine on the that you blow up the wall to shine on, and then this is the main room of Spirit Temple with the statue. You can actually see this room really clearly with this. Really make out everything. Do that yeah. jump slash. <laughs> the jump slash is is so cool. Oh, and by the way, hovering up to the uh, face right here was rather difficult because there's um, a bunch of different, like, slopes right beneath on the statue. And if you're above uh, a certain kind of slope, one that's too steep it'll, and that will make Link, like, start to slide down, then you can't uh, hover correctly. So you had to maneuver really carefully. I confirm this is a terrible hover. So, is the way this collision viewer works, is it just more like when you're out of bounds, it like activates, or is this like being spliced in? I'm not sure. Okay. I think, I think Nerd said he made it so you can just turn it on and off, like whatever, but I don't know. Oh, okay. uh, Nerds, Nerds made a paste bin that I'll read in a second. Uh, it might be answered in that. 